It's about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Beaver. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. What is happening? Welcome to another, uh, I don't know, almost said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We are Wednesday here if you are tuning in live online here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, I'm Jim Beaver bringing you all the action, calling the play-by-play today. Sorry if uh, you're acting a little different. I was uh, calling play-by-play there at the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League this weekend. They're at ERX in Minnesota, so I still got my uh, TV voice on. We've got to switch that up to radio. Um, but uh, uh, great show lined up today. I uh, think you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, definitely bring in the dirt. Uh, this is kind of a throwback to where we got started here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, bring in... Uh, Bringing some heavy hitters from the off-road world. We got Mark McMillan, off-road legend, absolute legend. Um, he is uh, being inducted in the 2018 Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, but he is also the chairman of the board of the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Uh, Mark McMillan, he is going to be locked in and loaded here today. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, to having Mark on the show. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, McMillan Racing, uh, you know, Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, off-road history, just a little of everything Um Fun to catch up with Mark McMillan. Had a lot of fun with him last year in Crandon. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll touch a bit on that. But uh, uh, Mark McMillan on the line today. That one's going to take up two segments. Long interview with Mark. Uh, we got my good friend Tiffany Stone. Uh, she was back there at the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League with me as well. Uh, we're going to break down all the action that happened out there uh, at ERX Motor Park. That's going to be an hour number two. And then we got Razor Long Jump King. That is king of the long jump, Mr. Al McBeth. He is going to be calling in i hope you guys are following him on instagram because it's absolute bananas what this guy is doing in a polaris razor so all that and more coming at you today on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor you want extreme performance reliability and the most fun you can have on four wheels the polaris razor brings it to you but you don't need to take my word for it you can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3 from General Tire. Make your anywhere possible by visiting GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressive styling with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I am back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver here calling the shots today on uh, this episode number 345 of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. 345 uh, episodes in. You know, I was I was thinking about that, actually, like in the lead up to the show, and I started to text uh, a couple people in the industry, and I went, ah, you know, we'll, we'll hold up on that for a second. But I started thinking, I'm like, you know, we've been doing the same thing. You know, we, we've expanded our coverage, our content. We're bringing in personalities, uh, you know, that, to help us with the with the coverage. Um, you know, we, we've, we're getting the best names in the business. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's IndyCar, um, you know, NHRA, Off-Road, Rally, Action Sports. I mean, we, we, we've, you know, we've come up with a home for these people, right? Uh, you know, on the radio and air waves, I know we got to get our Facebook uh, uh, live stream back, you know, but I started thinking, I'm like, how, how do we do this? You know, every time I do a live show, it's really well received. You know, the listeners are solid. Um, I, I'm talking about live remote shows out at events and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I had Dak Shepard on, he teamed with me in Star Car, had him on earlier this year. Um, you know, and we were talking podcasting. He's got this new armchair expert um, on his mailing list, and he just got a thing, you know, and he's doing a tour, right? And he's doing like a couple dates in Texas and things like that. And I'm like, you know, I wonder if we put together like a, a five date tour uh, for the Down and Dirty Radio Show, like live at events. And, um, you know, I'm going to be doing SEMA this year. We're going to be in the Vision Wheel booth. I think I'm going to be doing the uh, Sand Sports show um, in the Moto Shield booth. But I'm talking like, um, you know, like out at an events, but like an intimate setting, like uh, at a bar, you know, you got the speakers where everything's piped, uh, you know, piped out of, uh, you know, you know, piped out so you guys can sit there, have drinks, but not just me talking. I mean, like when we're out at events, say, um, you know, say I do one at, uh, you know, Circuit of the Americas next year. Uh, for ARX, you know, you get sitting there at a roundtable discussion for an hour, like Ken Block, Travis Pastrana, um, you know, Scott Speed, like it's a full on roundtable with the biggest names in whatever sport that is, uh, you know, and, you know, you do it at a bar or something like that. I mean, um, you guys hit me up on social media at Jim Beaver 15. Let me know if you would be interested in something like that. If we did like a, um, a tour next year, five dates, five of the biggest motorsports events in action motorsports, uh, maybe do one at X Games. Um, you know, do one at uh, Circuit of the Americas for ARX. Maybe do one at a Supercross round, you know, and have uh, have some Supercross legends, you know. But full-on one-hour roundtable discussion, um, you know, at an event. You know, would you show up? Would you listen to, uh, say, Pastrana or Roxon or guys like that? You know, Rob McCachron, would you listen to them, uh, you know, talk for an hour, you know, with me? And just, uh, you know, um, you know, as you're sitting there at a bar having uh, having some drinks and stuff like that. I don't know. You let me know. It works for Dak Shepard, right? I know I'm not Dak Shepard, but I'm just brainstorming here, man. I want to give back to uh, the fans, listeners of this show. Um, so uh, you guys let me know uh, what your thoughts are on that. But um, 
just me brainstorming out there, putting it into, uh, I guess, out into uh, the world of the internet, and uh, I guess, you know, a lot of networks too, but uh, you guys let me know if you guys would be down for something like that. I think it could be fun. Five dates, five different motorsport, um, you know, like one off-road, one indie car. Gosh, you imagine if we did NHRA and we had Milliken and Brown, Torrance, get the Force Girls there. Um, wow, that would be entertaining. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, thinking through some ideas for next year. I'm sure I could get Podcast One on board with it, too. And uh, I think it could be uh, could be a lot of fun. So, um, anyways, uh, moving forward, we got uh, Mark McMillan, hour number one. He is coming up uh, after the break. It's a two-part interview. Uh, you guys are going to enjoy that. Hour number two, Tiffany Stone. Uh, we've got Al McBeth on the line. Uh, we've got a lot of rally to talk about. We'll be talking about some Wormhoff as well as, uh, you know, we're going to be talking with that with Mark McMillan here shortly. But uh, uh, before we get to that, you know, I was out there at uh, uh, Midwest Short Course League, uh, you know, just I got to tip the cap. We're going to talk a lot about it today. But I've got to tip uh, the cap to uh, the Carlston or the Carlson and the Playstead families there at ERX Motor Park. Um, Absolutely. The most beautiful off-road facility in the United States. And that's not saying that Cranon isn't uh, beautiful. I'm just saying, like, if you go in, and I don't want to say an open checkbook because they didn't do it with an open checkbook, but that place, absolutely beautiful. Uh, The racing was great. The track is great. Um, Big jumps. I mean, they've got the split lane. Amazing facility. I'm telling you, this is the third year of it. Uh, The crowd has grown every single year. If you're looking for an event and, you know, for next year to go to something for summer, like seriously, pencil in Minnesota, uh, ERX Motor Park, pencil it into your schedule on your calendars. It's worth it. And not only that, I mean, Minnesota in the summertime, I mean, you got the Twins, you got Mall of America, you got water parks, you got the lakes, uh, you got X Games. Man, you could have done a vacation, hit ERX one weekend, did Mall of America, all the water parks during the week, and then hit X Games the following weekend and the fly out. Like, I'm planning your vacation for you, but I'm just telling you, ERX Motor Park, if you haven't been there yet, it should be on your bucket list, beautiful facility, Um, you know, and it's only three years deep. I can only imagine where uh, where that's going to go. So great racing out there, the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League. We'll talk about that uh, coming up probably hour number two. Um, But um, just had a a ton of fun out there. So um, thanks to uh, Lucas and, uh, you know, and both Carlson, Playstead families, beautiful facility. And uh, um, but uh, we got some bigger news right now. If you're tuning in this weekend, it's over. If you're tuning in now, it's I believe tonight. Um, but uh, ESPN SB Awards. Um, you know, we talk about this every year. Uh, they got a couple categories that do matter to us. Uh, one being best driver, right? They got best driver, and uh, I've been critical the past couple years of it, and I'm going to be critical this year. Of the ESPN SB Awards, right? Best driver. You think motorsports? Who were the best in motorsports in the past twelve months? I'm not talking about last year because this wraps from summer to summer. I'm talking about um, in the past twelve months who have been the best. Uh, you know, they got IndyCar, Joseph Newgarten. Uh, you, you know, you can't really. You can't really say no. I mean, he won the championship last year, had a had a great year. You know, arguably he's in there. Martin Truex. You know, I, I, the biggest problem with the ESPN SB Awards in me is I feel like they phone in these picks every single year. Uh, Martin Truex, he won the NASCAR championship. Oh, we're just going to throw him up there. Um, you know, not that he isn't worthy. It's just like they phone these in. Louis Hamilton, Formula One. Um, you know, it's like, oh, we got to have the token Formula One, you know, so we'll just – Throw in Louis Hamilton. Like, I don't know. I mean, there's so many people across the board in motorsport that have accomplished so much. And, like, I just feel like these ESPY awards just totally, it's a phone-in by ESPN. And here's the one. So you got Brittany Force, NHRA. Brittany Force, I've had her on here, absolutely deserving to be in this category. But I feel like you can't have Brittany Force in here without having Steve Torrance. Now, here's why. Brittany Force won the championship last year in Top Fuel. Yes, she beat Steve Torrance. Yes. But Steve Torrance dominated last year. Absolutely dominated last year. He had a hiccup in their playoff system. Brittany Force won the championship. Nobody's arguing that. Brittany had a phenomenal year. Big Brittany Force fan. Love having her on the show. Um, But I'm just saying, Steve Torrance had just as good a year, if not better. He just didn't, quote, get crowned champion. Um, And that's not taking away from what Brittany Force accomplished. She is the true champion. Steve will be the first to tell you that. Like, the girl won. 
But then you look at this year because this thing encompasses an entire year, and you got um, you look at this year and uh, Brittany, Brittany not having as good a year. Steve absolutely de- destroying everyone. He's winning every single round. Like I, I mean, I could have Steve, I could have Steve on the show every week. He's that good. He, he's running away with the championship. So to have Brittany Force, not Steve Torrance. Steve Torrance isn't the name. Like in HR, HRA circles, he is. But Brittany is, you know, she's got the star power ESPN wants. I'm thinking they both should be. On there, why not have two NHRA drivers? Have both Brittany and Steve on the best driver. Um, but you know, it, it's oh, Steve Torrance against Lenny Hamilton. People are going to be like, who, who's Steve Torrance, right? So you know, I think it's a media play um, by ESPN, right? You know, it's all about the ratings, you know. And uh, um, I don't know. And then you look at best male action sports athlete. Um, you know, they got a skier from Sweden, uh, Kevin Hoffler, skateboard, David Weiss, uh, Marcus Cleveland, snowboard. Like, I don't know. I'm looking at this going, these are not any of the dudes I would have on there. You know, maybe one or two of them. Best female action sports athlete, Chloe Kim. Chloe Kim's shredder, right? She could be on there every year. Jamie Anderson. Um, you know, she had a good year, but I don't know. Brighton Zoyner. That's a solid pick, but, uh, you know, I think it's another splash pick as well, you know. Steph Gilmore surf. Like, I don't know. I feel like they phone these in every year, though, and just, um, you know, I don't know. It's ESPN. I love you, but, uh, man, why don't you hire me to help you with these picks? Or at least somebody I know. I got a list of people that would be phenomenal for it. So, anyways, that is ESPYs. We'll talk X Games later on in the show as well. Um, But uh, more to come here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm R.J. Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at motoshieldpro.com. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. 
Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, joined on the line by uh, Mark McMillan um, with the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, as well as uh, we just found out, Mark, you're getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this fall. Uh, welcome to the show, my friend. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, Yeah, I'm the chairman of the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame uh, for the last three years at the request of a good friend, Rod Hall and uh, Frank D'Angelo, and I'm enjoying that. And, uh, yes, I'm going to be honored here uh, in uh, late October. I believe it's the 29th in Vegas at the South Point. So, uh, But that introduction, the first and foremost, should have been uh, one of the family members of McMillan Racing. So uh, the Corky McMillan Companies and McMillan Racing, we've been at it since 1976. So... Um, tons of fun in the deserts, both in Baja, Southern California, and uh, glad to be on the show today. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, you know, I've had uh, your sons Dan and Luke on the show numerous times. I've had Andy on numerous times, but I think this is the first time we've had you on. So uh, uh, this is kind of switching it up a bit. I'm kind of excited about this one. I know uh, you and I, uh, I, we won't say what happened, but I think uh, you and I, you know, I've known of you for a long time. You rescued me in Baja at one point in the early 2000s. I don't even think you remember about it, but I was dead in the water, literally at a water crossing pre-running, and you came and bailed me out. Um, but we had a good time. I really got to know you at Cranon last year, and I got to tell you, Mark McMillan puts his hair down at Cranon and has a good time, and that's all we'll say about it. But um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, you love all forms of off road. Doesn't matter if it's Baja racing here in the United States, uh, you know, short course there at Cranon. I mean, you're just a consumer of all things off road, right? Well, I like watching it all. I've uh, held my kids back to just the desert. There was there was a time when Dan and Luke, you know came into my office and closed the door and said, we want to go short course racing. And I said, well, okay, that's fine. It's one or the other though, because it's, it's, you know, as much as it looks alike, it's two complete different sports and that's different vehicles. It's different prep guys. It's another six or eight weekends out of your calendar. And, uh, our family also enjoys the river and doing a lot of other things, but, uh, yeah, I love watching it. I'm, I'll probably go back to Grandin again this year, uh, and uh, consume a few uh, a few frosty cold pilsners. So yeah, well, I I told Are my you? I told my dad, I, you know, I, I signed this deal with Lucas to be their TV host for all the Midwest races. So I'm going back there, and my dad. I told him about all the fun I had in with you last year, and my dad's like, you know, he's like, I just think I'm going to go to Crandon this year. So we rented a house on the lake there um, in Crandon, and uh, dad's coming back, and this will be his first time actually, you know, he you know, he did all those races, uh, you know, Riverside and all that, you know, in his old Class 8 truck in the 80s, and he said it was always one of those things he wanted to go and race, and he just, being a West Coast guy, never could make the trip back there. And so this will actually be his first experience at Crandon. I think he's pumped. Well, I would I would encourage anybody to put on your bucket list if you haven't. You can watch the big house on TV, but uh, to be there and hear that and feel that ground shake with those 800 horsepower. Uh, well, I'll embarrass myself here. I don't know what the Pro Twos or Pro Fours or whatever they are. And I'll give a shout out to the Flannery family. They uh, they do an awesome job back there and make anybody and everybody feel like uh, VIP. And I'll go back probably this year again with Cliff and Jason shows me around and. Uh, It'll be a lot of fun, and I'll be sure to run into you and your dad there. I'd like to have uh, a couple of beers and break bread with your dad and talk about the Parker days back in the old in the seventies. Oh yeah, I'm sure he'll uh, he'd love to do that. I know we've got uh, uh, you know you you had sent me I think about two years ago one of uh, one of your books out, and uh, literally that thing hit my desk, and then. My dad swiped it up, and he took it, and then like a month later, I get the book back. You know what I mean? But it, it went to him before well, it went to me. He found that. He's, and, uh, you know, we got to talk about the family and your book because, uh, you know, I mean, to me, that, that piece wasn't just a McMillan history piece. That was There was a lot of history just on the entire sport of off-road in that book. Yeah, I, I decided to put that together. You know, my father left us in 05, and it, I didn't really do it for about 10 years, but I was thinking about it. And then I talked to Marty Fioka, a good friend and, and writer and off-road enthusiast, and as well as an off-road uh, motorsports Hall of Fame inductee. And I said, Marty, I want to put together my racing history. He goes, okay. And then he came down to my shop and he saw what I had. And he goes, well, this will be a huge project, but you've made it easy. You've got, I've got an amazing collection of stuff. It's all by every race has a folder, all 300 of them over the last 40 years and uh we started putting it together i thought it'd be 200 pages it ended up being 500 pages i just made a note here i'm going to mail your dad one it's 
He has his own book. <laughs> and anybody else uh, that would like a book, uh, I'm Mark McMillan at McMillan.com. So um, I'd be happy to mail it, send one out to somebody if they just want to pay me the postage. So um, anyway, I had a lot of fun doing that, and it's been a great uh, reference book for our family, but also the entire uh, sport of off-road. Yeah, well, you know what I think about that? I love what the Off-Road Hall of Fame is doing now with uh, uh, a lot of the old dusty times and things like that. I mean, you know, dads like you, he's got, you know, there was a period there in the 70s when there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, I, I mean, you know, photography. It was just a different world than it is today, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, Jim Ober did a tremendous job of trackside and things. And dad like you, he's got everything, you know, everything chronological order through his career in the 70s and old magazine uh, magazines and things like that, but um, you know, I think it's amazing. You know that that you've preserved that. I mean, my dad has, but now with Ormhoff, what they're doing with Dusty Times, some of the history, because you know that stuff. A lot of it just went away. It's not digital like it is now, where it's you know floating in the cloud somewhere. I mean, that stuff. If you didn't take care of it, it just kind of wilted and rotted away. Yeah, it it, it has. We uh, we were very fortunate to get the Dusty Times collection from oh Gene. Uh, John Calvin's, uh, John Calvin, Gene and John Calvin, and John Calvin's widow has it now, and she's letting us use it. And uh, and then also just recently we got a call from Judy Smith, our good friend, and you know her and John live up in the desert, and she says, you know what, I'm not going to be here forever either. So uh, why don't you guys come up here and get this stuff? So we're trying to raise money at the Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame full time. Um, and one of the items that'll be on a silent auction item this year at our uh, auction at our Hall of Fame dinner in October will be give people the opportunity to actually pay for the digitizing of one year of the of the uh, Dusty Times. And you know what? The reason I did a book was, uh, you know, I'm not too techy, but I don't know where this cloud thing's going to be in 50 years. And uh, hopefully somebody can still reach up and grab it and be able to look at information. But I'm still a big fan of a uh, tabletop mm-hmm. for history purposes. Yeah, there's no, so nothing beats a tabletop book, especially one like the Macmillan's. You know, it's hard, you know, hardback, colorful pictures. I mean, nothing beats able to, being able to, you know, just pick it up and look at it. Not at my age, it's perfect. It's easy. <laughs> it's like a good, you know, without the pictures, it wouldn't be anything. So. Um, Hugh Hefner wouldn't have gotten there without the pictures either, because I don't think people were picking his book up for the uh, for the articles. Uh, well, isn't that isn't that the truth there? Uh, well, talking about the Off Road Hall of Fame, I mean, uh, we'll talk about you know the induction ceremony and the class here in a second. I want to talk about you personally because you've been inducted. I mean, to me, I know this has been a long time coming. You you don't want to admit that, and I know you probably didn't want to go in this soon, especially being on the board. I think you know that's another reason why you should be in because you were one that hey, I want to kind of delay this until I'm not you know involved that way. It's on my you know people don't perceive it a certain way, but um, I mean, you're a guy that I look at it, and you could have went in for competition for being an advocate, for being a pioneer. I mean, you and, uh, you know, and, and your dad and, you know, the entire family, I mean, what you guys have given back, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, looking back on your career, I mean, you know, the three different things, I mean, what are some of the things that stand out in your mind, you know, that McMillan's have, have done and accomplished in off-road racing? Well, I think, uh, you know, off-road racing, first and foremost, is um, an individual sport. It's the driver. But the driver can't get anywhere any any anywhere without a team. It's a great team sport. But I think also bigger than that, we got our promoters, and we have a lot of good. It'd be no fun to be racing without the competition, and we got a lot of good competitors. People like yourself, uh, the Gordon family, our Sierros. The list goes on and on and on. And uh, the Steele family, Mark Steele. I'll give a shout out to Cameron and Heidi. I hope they're doing well here with Mark Steele passing last week. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a fraternity that we have and it's what I love racing. I love having a good, a successful team, but I also like giving back to the off-road community. Uh, back in the late eighties or early eighties, I was asked by South Fish to chair the, um, the class, be a class rep and start working on the rules and stuff. And uh, I've done that, and I was also appointed by Arnold Schwarzenegger to the Off-Road Motorsports Off-Road Commission to help with the green sticker money, to help keep roads open, trails open, and be an advocate for what we do. 
and uh, but my name was was floated up by Marty Fioca, and I did. I was successful at putting it at bay for a couple of years because I said I don't want to come in as a chairman and have my name go on the nomination committee, and uh, and it just doesn't look right. So I put it off for two or three years. So, but this year I'm going to be inducted with Robbie Pierce, Johnny Campbell. I don't have that list in front of me. That's embarrassing. Yeah, well, Cameron Steele's another one that's on there. I mean, this, Cameron this, Steele. This class is just, uh, you know, it's a phenomenal class of, uh, you know, of of just people involved in the sport of off-road. I mean, guys like Robbie who have, you know, has, has helped, you know, just the safety of off-road. you got guys like Cameron who has been a, a, a face and a voice. I mean, you know, guys like you that have, you know, that have done well in multiple aspects. Johnny Campbell, I mean, one of the most dominant motorcycle racers ever. I mean, I think it's such a great mix. That's what I love about the Off-Road Hall of Fame, that it's just, you know, there's so many ways that, you know, that the Off-Road Hall of Fame just embraces everybody in the off-road community, you know. And, and you know, and it doesn't matter if you've got, you know, 200 career victories like a Rob McCachran. Um, you know, there, there's other ways that uh, you know that you can get into the Hall of Fame and the Off-Road Hall of Fame recognizes that and honors it. We've been talking with the Off-Road Hall of Fame chairman Mark McMillan as well as uh, an inductee into the 2018 class of the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Uh, absolute legend, class act, the McMillan family and we have a lot more to come talking history off-road, the Off-Road Hall of Fame and uh, McMillan Racing when we come back from this short break. So uh, definitely don't want to miss this. The interview with Mark McMillan continues here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at motoshieldpro.com. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, right now, we are in the middle of catching up with Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame Chairman Mark McMillan, who is also an off-road racing legend. Uh, countless wins to his credit. Uh, so many technical advances coming out of the McMillan Racing uh, shop there. And, uh, you know, he's an inductee into the 2018 class. Uh, just a, a great personality around off-road. Uh, I've got to spend a lot of time with him uh, out at Cranon. Uh, he's pulled me out of Baja. Um, pre-running uh, just uh, the McMillan you know racing footprint just uh, so large in off-road motorsports but uh, right now we're talking about uh, the off-road motorsports hall of fame and the many different ways uh, that you can get inducted into the hall of fame so mark uh, you know kind of bring us in the loop I mean on the history of the off-road hall of fame uh, you know kind of how it got started and uh, you know what the off-road hall of fame looks for in uh, potential uh, inductees and uh, uh, you know and, and the you know many different ways that that uh, that you can find yourself, I guess, quote unquote, enshrined. Correct. Yeah, we've been promoting, as you know, Ed Perlman started this thing in the '70s. It went for a few years. Um, Ed Perlman was the uh, founder of N- uh, Nora, and then it was kind of uh, laid to rest for a little while, and then Rod Hall picked it up and inducted a bunch of well-deserving people, and now I'm helping, and uh, we're doing, you know, four to six people a year, three to six people a year, and it's not just about being a great racer. It's not about just being a great sponsor. Um, we got, you know, Jim Ober from Trackside for documenting what we've done for 30 or 40 years. Uh, we got two more individuals this year uh, being inducted with us, and I am digging quick here at my desk because I'm embarrassed I can't find their names, but two off-road advocate people who are out there advocating for us for land use. Those are the unsung heroes of uh, of this business as well as the business that we've made our money at uh, um, development. It's people out there that are advocating for you to let you be able to do what you do. Um, it's not just all about the shiny semis and the chase trucks and helicopters and stuff um but it's we've got a great class going in this year yeah well you know that being said i mean we've talked about you know kind of a bit about your career about the off-road hall of fame i mean uh, you know where, where, where do you see off-road right now and, and where it's headed i mean i i know just you know looking at trophy trucks i mean the budgets have gone just absolutely bananas you know and the, and the technology and the competition level of competing in trophy truck is it's such a high level right now but uh i mean entry numbers are just ballooning we've got wait lists 100 deep for the mint i mean where, you know where, where do you see the sport of off-road now and then you know in the next say five to ten years mark well it's uh it's as strong as i've ever seen it um that's for darn sure it'd be great if it was uh stronger in all the classes but the trophy trucks seem to be kind of what the people want to see and uh and hear a lot of horsepower being created there um you know i worry about the land use stuff this little uh land use meeting that went down in vegas about three weeks ago that's threatening our prim area um you know that's a good news bad news it's good news for the economy it's uh, bad news for the hundred mile racetrack that we've had out there that we've gone backwards forward sideways up down and around it's also good news uh although it's not going to be easy. Uh, I think a lot of us are tired of that race car, racetrack, and uh, it's time to go find some new ground. So I know Martelli's and the, the Snore people and Best in the Desert people are probably getting together and trying to figure out where we can race. Um, but I think the sport will will keep growing, absolutely. Yeah, wait, wait. Um, what do you think about a place like Texas, Mark? I mean, I look at that, and I know there's a lot of private land there. There's a lot of public land. I mean, I look at a place like that and go, you know, I wonder what it would take to put on a proper desert race, you know, and draw, you know, the big names of the sport, the McMillans and the Gordons and, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, you know, and, and bring that to Texas because I see all the land there and I go, you know, there's got to be a sponsor somewhere in Texas and a landowner that says, hey, we want you guys. Come over here. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'd go to Texas or uh, wherever they want to take us, New Mexico, Arizona. There's a lot of racing over there. Um it, 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 it's like squeezing, you know, water around in a balloon. Someone, someone will have us because it's a good show, and people want to race. 
Uh, people are coming to Baja from Vegas. People are coming to Baja from Portland, Oregon, uh, like the Tisco boys did for years. And, uh, you know, they'll find a spot. Texas is a good place. There's, that's a, that's a people first, that's a people first state. Uh, they're taking care of their environment, but, uh, they're not forgetting the people that want to use it. So, well, I pres- also here, I, I, I got to give a shout out to Jim Branham. He's another guy that's being inducted with me. He's uh, he's a, a, a pioneer in the sport and was very involved with uh, Cal Four Wheel and uh, with Johnny Campbell, myself, Robbie Pierce, and then there's another guy, Ed Robinson, yes. who's uh, very very involved with uh, off road racing in an advocacy way. He, has, he also is a promoter up in the uh, Northern Cal area with Bora, B-O-R-R-A. So there's Bora, there's Core, there's all kinds of racing organizations. And some of these people that have started some of these smaller ones, um, and they're out there advocating for, for races at Hollister Hills and stuff of Northern Cal. Um, it's not the score. It's not the best in the desert. It's not Crandon, but it's, uh, it's just as important because it's kind of like the feeder, the feeder races. Yeah, well, it's it's lower cost and it allows people a gateway to the bigger series. You know, it's uh, yeah. um, you know, it's grassroots racing at its best. And these people give their give 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 you know somebody the the fourteen year olds and the twelve year olds and the seven year olds have got probably got the little mini bike races out there on Sunday morning like like Otis like Fud used to do down here in our local desert Plaster City. You know, we'd go down there on Fridays and race on Saturdays, and then Sunday morning he'd have Bloody Marys and awards. Then he'd set up like you know eighteen orange cones and everybody bring their kid over with a helmet and boots and let them go around the mitt the cones you know 10 times and you give the kid a trophy too yeah. it's uh it's really grassroots yeah. so that's the class for the off-road motorsports hall of fame this year and uh um i do want to say a little about mcmillan racing we're doing a good job we've uh it's been a while since i could say we had uh three cars in the top five, two races in a row. So, and that is tough, tough stuff to do with the trophy trucks these days. You're not kidding. That is, it's ridiculously hard. <laughs> it, is, it is tough. When we don't do anything wrong, we continue to do everything right. And every now and then you draw the short straw on a, I'm not even going to name a component because I don't want to point any of my vendors because they're all good. But every now and then you get a short straw with whatever component it would be. My guys are out testing in the desert today because they're, trying different uh, sway bars or trying different springs. I got Larry Rosler out driving the uh, one of the trucks. I'm not even sure which truck it is. I think it's Dan's 23 truck because uh, Dan's in Alaska fishing with Robbie Pierce and Mike Jolson, a bunch of racing guys. Luke was supposed to go, but he's had a he had an appendicitis attack on Saturday night and had to have surgery Sunday morning. So he doesn't get didn't get to go to Alaska or testing the race trucks. But we keep the program going, and he's he's at home resting. He's fine. He's got three little holes in his tummy and pulled out a bad appendix, and uh, he'd be good to go for the thousand. Yeah. So uh, you guys uh, going to be doing Vegas Torino as well, middle of uh, middle of August, kind of getting ready for the thousand. Not going to do that one this okay. year. I gave speaking of budget, everybody's got a budget, and uh, there's there's two different things at this sport. Um, being able to afford it's one thing. Being able to justify it's another. And uh, I told my boys at the beginning of the year, you get this many green flags. Uh, <laughs> so five races or four races times two trucks. Uh, they might go race another one between now and then, but it would be there's a race in Barstow next weekend. But Luke, no, it's August 2nd. No, the, uh, Vegas is this weekend, but we're skipping that one. There's another one at Prim like August 4th, that they might take one of the trucks up to. So there's, we want to try some of the components. Yeah, and we can test all day long, but it's there's no, you can't replicate yeah. the adrenaline and the competition and on race day. So we want to go hit some stuff hard with some stuff we're testing. And uh, that's what they might do. Yeah. So uh, one so. last question before we let you go. How about you? I mean, I know you like to jump behind the wheel still occasionally. I mean, we're going to see you uh, uh, out there behind the wheel at uh, any events here in the next year? Well, for sure, the Nora race in the McAdoo. Um, I had to set that out this year. Um, my wife's health had a tough 11 months, but that's all behind us now, too, with breast cancer. So 
and I think most people in the business knew it. So she's doing well. It's all behind us. Uh, I've got Mr. Mark has to have a new hip. Um, I've had back surgery due to racing. I've had a collarbone broken in a race. I got hit by another car. And now I'm blaming my hip on uh, that dead man pedal <laughs> and the buggies all that years. And I'm bone on bone with the left hip. So I got to lose 30 or 40 pounds. That's not going very well because I'm not trying very hard. And then they want to do surgery. So I'd love to get back in a car, but it won't, it won't be to be competitive. Yeah. It will be a uh, second truck and or third truck in the ball 1000. Cause maybe Mike Jolson and I and Larry Raglan or somebody like that will go, uh, We'll just go put one in there. And I did that about three years ago, and we ended up getting fourth. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Told, you're, uh, you're telling me you and uh, Raglan and Jolson, I'm going, well, this sounds like a team that can actually go and win this darn Yeah, night. whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, blowing, I'm just blowing smoke, but I'd love to do that. Um, it'd be fun. Yeah. So well, Those trophy the, trucks are fun. Yeah. Those, those trophy trucks are funner than hell at like 80%. Yeah, that's... They're just easy to drive. They're forgiving. But uh, you're not going to be. You're going to be. You're going to be an hour late getting to El Chinero going over the summit if you're only driving eighty percent. So yeah. <laughs> that'd be me. Uh, Sunday drive, right, or Saturday drive? But I've been the. Fr- but I've been the first guy to El Chinero many, many times in the eighties. So absolutely, I know how to be up front there. But we'll. Uh, I'm going to leave it up to Dan and Luke, and Andy's doing a great job. Um, so. Let them carry the That's torch about, now. That's <laughs> about enough on that question. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Mark. Uh, you know, once again, congrats on uh, being inducted into the Off-Road Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, thanks to everything that, uh, you know, McMillan family has, you know, given back to racing. And, uh, you know, what you're doing there as uh, chairman there at the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame, uh, you know, I, I definitely, you know, I think with any business or any hobby, you know, you always want to go in and, uh, you know, when you ultimately leave, you want to leave it in a better place. And, uh, you know, you guys have definitely changed the landscape of off-road, uh, you know, the past three, four decades. So thank you for everything you guys have done well that's good I, that, that was well put I, I thank you jim for the opportunity this morning and i'd like to thank polaris for uh evidently they're helping you with this show yep. and uh polaris has done a lot of good things and uh boy have they got a great product <laughs> that thing out of the box is just easy to drive and they're just they're they're great polaris is are, they are and uh I could give a shout out to all my fellow board members at Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Thank you very much for helping. And Barbara, Rainey, you're the best. Thank you very much. And anybody wants to get involved or just send us $500, Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame dot org, I think. Yeah, we'll definitely get the, link, the links posted. But if you out. can't find it, you're not trying hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Mark McMillan, you know, here's a guy I. I grew up watching racing. I mean, uh, he and my dad uh, about the same age, I think, and uh, you know, just uh, the McMillan family. I mean, you know, goes back to Corky, but Mark and Scott, and now you know, you got Luke, Dan, uh, Andy, uh, Jessica. Uh, you know, the the list goes on. Uh, you know, and true story in there. You know, Mark actually, we're talking uh, early, probably my second Baja Five Hundred. I'd borrowed a pre runner. Mine was in capacitated at the time uh you know went down to baja pre-running the baja 500 uh water crossing um got some water uh engine soaked in some water into the air filter and uh, was kind of dead in the water um and uh, mark showed up uh pulled me out of the water um you know literally had a spare air cleaner put it on the truck uh you know got everything cleaned up and i was on my way and uh you know went and finished the pre-run but uh wouldn't happen without mcmillan racing and uh, mark didn't have to stop he you know he didn't know who was in the pre-runner either i found out it was me and you know eventually obviously and uh you know you know i think that made the call even easier but uh that's just the type of people they are they'll stop for anybody and help them out and uh you know definitely a a great family uh well deserving him being inducted in the hall of fame this year uh just an amazing class that's going to be inducted that we'll talk about here uh, uh, later on in the show. But uh, thanks to Mark uh, for calling in. Uh, you know, thanks to Off Road Hall of Fame for everything that they do. And uh, uh, we're going to take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to wrap up hour number one and uh, head into hour number two here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere is possible with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. If you're just tuning in uh, nationally or online and somehow missed that Mark McMillan interview and you enjoy off-road, I suggest you go back uh, into the archives after the show is over. Listen to that, whether it's on the website or if you go to iTunes and subscribe, uh, you know, and listen there. But uh, great interview there with uh, Mark McMillan. Um, you know, always, always fun, uh, you know, catching up with anybody from the McMillan family. Just, you know, they, they've had such a massive footprint in off-road. And, uh, uh, you know, to be able to talk with them at, uh, at length, uh, you know, about anything is fun. I mean, that's one of those where it would be fun someday to, uh, uh, you know, go to the McMillan Racing Shop and literally sit down with, uh, you know, Mark, Dan, Luke, you know, f- you know, forget that, get, get all of them, you know, Scott, Andy, Jessica, just sit them all down, you know what I mean, and have a roundtable discussion. That would be uh, fun. I can only imagine the stories that would come out of there. But uh, um, McMillan Racing, classic family, uh, definitely don't miss that one. Um, make sure and check us out on the Internet, uh, our website, downanddirtyshow.com. We're punching out a lot of off-road news features. Uh, we've got a, uh, you know, a bunch of, um, uh, you know, just all kinds of motorsport content. Chris Leone absolutely killing it there with our web content. Uh, did a feature piece on Steve Torrance. You definitely should read. If you're a motorsports fan, uh, this guy's story, it will blow your mind. So uh, make sure and check that out, downanddirtyshow.com. And uh, once again, uh, our you know, this show is, uh, you know, also in podcast form. Please go to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, they're on iTunes, Down and Dirty Show. And if you have a chance, uh, leave a rating review. Uh, and if you leave that rating review, 
and I see it, um, you know, I will, uh, you know, you use your Twitter, Instagram, at your name in the review, uh, post it at the bottom of the review. I'll see it. I'll follow you on social media. So my promise to you. Also do the same for uh, my other show, Project Action on Podcast One. Separate RSS feed, separate subscription on iTunes, but uh, a lot of different type personalities there as well. But uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, kicking off hour number two here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Well, thanks to all of you for joining us today here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm your host, Jim Beaver, 345 episodes in now um, of the show that was never supposed to work, um, but somehow it did. We found our niche, and we are here 345 episodes in, which brings me to uh, here in about a month, we're going to have episode number 350. Um, you know, we like to blow things up here. We like to uh, get the big guests once in a while, bring them out for, uh, you know, those big milestone um, episodes, episode 350. I'd say that's a milestone, about every 50, you know, and because we do about 50 a year, um, you know, that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, takes about a year to do a, a milestone episode. But I think uh, I'm feeling Ken Block. It's been about two years since we had KB on the show. But uh, I don't know. I want your suggestions. Who else? I mean, last time you guys went to bat say, hey, we want Courtney Force on. I mean, uh, you know, should we go out on a flyer, try and get a guy like Mario Andretti, um, which would be fun. Um, you know, I got good relationship with my friends at Andretti there. John Force. I mean, uh, you know, Robbie Gordon. We need to get RG back at some point. Uh, you know, I know he's uh, over there in Europe right now. It looks like he stopped by the Dakar headquarters. Maybe we're going to see uh, RG back in Dakar this year. That would be fun. Maybe in a UTV. That's what I'm thinking. I'm feeling RG in a UTV at Dakar. So, um I don't know. Uh, you guys tell me, though. Uh, we're about four or five episodes away from episode 350, so i got to start the planning. But uh, I want to know who you guys think. Who are your picks to uh, appear on uh, that very special episode number 350? Fifty, um, right here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. So let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, but coming up here, hour number two. Here after the break, we are going to have a Dirtfish Rally report. Uh, we're going to be talking all things rally. We had a kickoff there at ARX at Coda, um, American kickoff for ARX. It was at Coda. Um, we're, we're talking about that. We got the New England Force Rally, Rally Colorado coming up. Uh, you know this week as well. So uh, lots of rally to talk about. Off, also, Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. We haven't talked in full about. Uh, the inductees there, so I'll uh, probably jump into that. And then we got Tiffany Stone. We're talking Lucas uh, Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League. Those results will be presented by General Tire and. Um Al Macbeth, looking forward to this one. Al Macbeth, this dude knows how to fly. Literally, this guy can fly. He's like Superman of Polaris Razors. Looking forward to having Macbeth on uh, in this hour as well. So lots of fun coming up in hour number two here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razors. So uh, hang tight, strap in, and it is going to be a great great hour number two so thanks to t- thanks for you guys tuning in. We'll be back right here after this short commercial break. Extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. 
I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3 from General Tire. Make your anywhere possible by visiting GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressive styling with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount you're listening to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor all killer and no filler welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor if you didn't realize that already that's what you are listening to uh jim beaver here uh bringing you uh all the action, calling all the shots today. Uh, hour number one, we had uh, Mark McMillan. Uh, definitely worth a listen. If you guys missed that, jump back there. Talking a little bit about ESP and ESPYs. we got X Games to talk about in this segment. But right now, we're talking Dirt Fish Rally Report. And uh, big, big week, weekend, I guess 10 days for the sport of rally here in the United States. Um, big one. ARX. We haven't talked about America's Rallycross Championship uh, uh, or America's Rallycross too much. Uh, you know, they kicked off their initial uh, race there at Silverstone. Um, you know, over uh, was over Memorial Weekend. I wasn't able to go over there. Uh, had plans to, and uh, you know, just too much going on with uh, Indy 500 and uh, you know, and that type of stuff. So I wasn't able to make the trip over there. Um, but I, I am going to get out to an event this year. Uh, looks like I'm going to go to uh, uh, the second round at Coda, Coda Two, I guess. Um, but it's when it's tied in with World Rallycross. So uh, I'm going to be making my trip to Coda there in the end of, end of uh, September, beginning of October uh, for that round. But I missed the uh, first round there at Coda. But uh, Scott Speed, um, you know, comes out on top of the box. Got to give a shout out to Connor Martell and the Lights winning it for Dirtfish. Uh, this kid. Um, you know, it is when is he going to make his way into a supercar? He's only been in uh, the sport of rallycross for a couple of years, and he's always just he's already just destroying the lights field. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what happens with uh, Connor Martell. Uh, I would say next year you're going to see him in a supercar somewhere, whether it be in ARX or if it's in uh, World Rallycross. This kid is going to get a supercar car ride. He's that good, and uh, you know, and I, he's still so young. Like I just wonder where where the where the limit is for this kid. I, I think it's uh, yet to be determined. Um, but uh, Connor Martel, uh, at some point we're going to uh, see him in a supercar. But he won the lights race. Scott Speed, uh, you know he. 
He took the victory there in Supercar. Uh, him and Tanner Faust run a one and two in the championship right now. Um, but uh, I see this quote from Scott after the event. And keep in mind, I didn't get to watch the live stream because uh, I was calling TV for Lucas there at the Midwest Short Course League. Um, but Scott, he quote this, uh, that final was not easy. I had to break 50 meters before the first two corners because I was getting plowed in the back by the number 43. Now, keep in mind, number 43, you guys know this, it's Ken Block, right? He goes, to, bear, to be fair, it wasn't too obnoxious and we were able to fight it off, and our speed showed. Um, we had an easy race from there. Um, but it's funny. If you remember a couple years back, Scott Speed and Ken Block, um, Scott had a little war with Ken Block on uh, on Instagram. You know, Ken never really uh, never really bought into it, to his credit. But Scott kind of went out and, ha- and tried to start a little Twitter war, or uh, Instagram war with Ken Block and about passing and this and that. And uh, so it is funny that all of a sudden it's, it's bad. Back, right you know the, this thing it, it's been gone for three years the guys are on track for the first time together in three years and boom immediately speed already throwing the trash talk out to block so um i find it humorous um but uh you know <laughs> you, and you got to remember though there was that year where block and speed i mean god block he basically won't Ken's got call, Ken. I feel bad for the guy. He is like a two-time GRC champion without actually being crowned champion. Like for some way, somehow, Ken Block is, was never a GRC champion, but he deserved to be. Um, he had the years to do it. It was flute deals that knocked him out. Like uh, I don't know. I feel bad for Block, but uh, uh, Block and Speed <laughs> it continues here in 2018 in America's Rallycross. So uh, uh, events coming up. They're, they're running at Troy River. Uh, Quebec uh, with the World Rallycross here in uh, a few weeks to start off uh, August. Um, then they come back, I believe. Uh, I don't know which what the date is of Nitro World Games. It is, has been announced, though. Uh, America's Rallycross will be a part of uh, the Nitro Circus World Games there in Salt Lake City. Uh, so that'll be happening. And then they've got the, uh, the other event with World RX uh, there at COTA. Um, you know, that they'll be racing there as well, uh, you know, to, you know, to cap things off. So, uh, you know, inaugural year, you know, they're still getting their feet wet, figuring things out there at ARX, uh, you know, solid team, solid racing tracks are going to be great. Uh, looking forward to it, but I will be out at, uh, Coda two, uh, into September, beginning of October. So, um, we'll be doing some live radio from there as well. Uh, still got to work through all those details, but it is coming. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, not only you have that, uh, we've got rally Colorado this weekend, uh, uh, you know, big news coming out of Rally Colorado, stacked entry list, but rumor has it that uh, um, we've got an, a stacked UTV division. It's not rumor, it's fact. Uh, Reese Millen, uh, he's bringing his razor out. He's going to be doing battle there. Steph Verdier, uh, he's going to be doing battle there in the UTV d- division at Rally Colorado. So UTVs, you know, they're, they're taking over uh, Sport of Stage Rally. Um, it's Rumor is Tanner Faust may be making his way there. Uh, so it's going to be really good UTV. TV Racing Rally Colorado. Then on the other side of the country, we've got another national championship event. We got New England Forest Rally, uh, you know, and we've got Subaru up there. We got Ken Block, who is taking, uh, uh, you know, his uh, vintage Kazi. He's going to be racing up there, uh, you know, at New England Forest Rally. So uh, lots of rally action this weekend. Uh, if you are a rally fan, man, you are, you know, going to be glued if you're a stage rally fan to your computers. Uh, but uh, that's all happening this weekend. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, if you're a Rally fan, uh, you know, you are going to be, you know, you're going to be stoked on the weekend. So uh, that is your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. Use that coupon code JBDirtfish. It'll give you 15% off at Dirtfish Rally School. So, um, yeah, that was uh, plenty of that. Uh, I did want to uh, make a quick mention on Ormhoff, uh, the full lineup. I know McMillan and I talked about it, um, but uh, the 2018 class is Cameron Steele, my good friend. Uh, we'll definitely have him on the show at some point. Uh, thoughts are with Cam, though. Uh, his father passed away last week, right within 24 hours of, uh, of this announcement of the Hall of Fame. So a heartbreaker for Cameron and Ivy Steele. Uh, his dad, Max Steele, just, uh, um, you know, has been a part of off-road community for a very long time. So thoughts going out with uh, Cameron and Heidi right now, but he is going into the Off-Road Hall of Fame. Robbie Pierce from Impact, formerly with Impact, I guess still with Impact, I don't know, with Jimco now, uh, but Robbie Pierce done a lot uh, you know, on the safety side of things to improve things in uh, Off-Road. He's going to be there. Mark McMillan, obviously, we talked with him. Johnny Campbell, the legend. Um, I would say the greatest uh, Off-Road um, 
motorcycle racer in Baja history. Um, Johnny Campbell, he's getting inducted. I mean, that was a, that's an absolute no-brainer. Um, and then we've got a couple of advocates, uh, Jim Jim Bramham um, and Ed Robinson with Vora. So, uh, you know, we've got some people on the advocate side, uh, competition side. You know, Cameron Steele, the voice and face of off-road for the past decade, uh, he's going in. So um, definitely a great class. Uh, looking forward to being there in Las Vegas. I don't know when tickets go on sale, but I know it's shortly. So if you're going to be at SEMA, you're going to be in Vegas area that Monday of the SEMA week. I don't know, is it the 29th, I believe? Um, definitely want to uh, grab your ticket. And they sold out last year. So, um, you know, if you want to want to make your way there, you better get your ticket uh, in a hurry when they uh, when they go on sale. But it is O-R-M-H-O-F, org. so Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. And it's not just off-road. They represent a short course, a rally, um, you know, all, you know, two-wheel stuff. So it's a, you know, it's an all-encompassing Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Um, but definitely, uh, we're, um, you know, officially a sponsor of it this year. So uh, uh, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, looking forward to being a part of things uh, coming in uh, October and uh, I guess end October, beginning of November. Um, but uh, then, uh, you know, we got to another event, man, we're running so short on time today um so short on time today with all the content we got to cover. Um, but quick, we got uh, X Games coming up this weekend. We'll probably have a winner on next week. Uh, but X Games is in Minneapolis. I, I guess uh, you listeners of this show, the uh, the events that matter to you. We got uh, uh, flat track racing. Um, we've got uh, Moto X uh, quarter pipe, uh, best trick, uh, Moto X freestyle step up. Got to give a shout out to my boy Renner. We got best whip. So anything with an engine in X Games we'll cover on this show. The other stuff we'll cover on uh, Project action but uh uh x games getting kicked off later this week or uh currently if you're listening uh uh in national syndication so uh um, just got to uh, give a shout out to all my friends that are racing. Uh, you know, looking forward to that flat track. It's uh, getting better and better. Uh, it sounds like this one isn't at Mall of America either. They're moving this to uh, uh, actually to Viking Stadium there, I guess, U.S. Bank Stadium. So um, got uh, um, got that coming up. And, uh, you know, I don't know, X Games, Stage Rally, got so much happening this weekend. Uh, you know, if you are a uh, motorsports fan, it's, uh, it's a lot to take in. So um, we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro learn more at motoshieldpro.com like what you hear catch all the back episodes of the down and dirty radio show on apple podcast and be sure to rate review and subscribe welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor jim yeah. beaver here joined on the line by tiffany stone how is everything going tiffany Good. Uh, actually, just got down to Belle Isle in Detroit. It's a beautiful day out here right now. Belle Isle in Detroit. You were there, what, a few weeks back for uh, the Detroit GP, too, right? Yes. Um, and It's crazy. I was just telling my friend Rachel, who came down, we took the, the new Jeep that I've been building. We took that down here, and I was like, honestly, Rachel, I don't think I've ever like been on this island without being here for the Detroit Grand Prix, at least within the last four years. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of those things like people in SoCal too, you know, like, like Long Beach Grand Prix, nobody goes down there. Like it's a beautiful area. Nobody goes to Long Beach. And then it's like once a year, they make the pilgrimage, like, you know, across town to, uh, you know, down there. And then everybody goes, Oh, I forgot how awesome it is down here. Exactly. And then we were just talking about that, like the conservatory is open and there's this Great Lakes Museum. I'm like, how are the, how did we not know about any of this? And she was like, the last time I was here is when I did a 10 mile run. So it's kind of cool that it's becoming a bigger thing. And especially with the Detroit being revitalized, a lot of people are down here. We were just looking at a picnic and I was joking there. I was like, should we go join their picnic? Cause it's kind of looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, and, you know, I think it's great, too, like motorsports can have that impact. You know, you're talking about revitalization of, of Detroit, but, you know, I, I would think that the, you know, the double in Detroit, that's had a lot to do with, uh, you know, bringing people in and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and just re-energizing certain areas of the city and things like that. I mean, I'm not overly familiar with Detroit. I've been there probably half a dozen times, but I haven't really had a chance to sightsee and things like that. But, I mean, you've been in Detroit your whole life, and I know there was a dark period, right, for Detroit for a few years. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I mean, within the last five, six years is really when things started happening. I, I mean, there's a whole new arena, the district area where the Red Wings play now. And honestly, in those areas, that used to just be nothing. And people would park there to go to, like, the Tigers games or the Lions games. And now there's this whole district with um, a bunch of restaurants and everything. And I'm a huge foodie, and Detroit's actually becoming a foodie town now. You know, there's really good restaurants, prime and proper, the apparatus room. You know, there's these really fine dining. And if you're really into that, it's something new that you can come down and check out. And I wish I had more time in Detroit since I'm always traveling, you know, like just like you are. But some really great restaurants are really coming about right now. Yeah, that's awesome to hear about Detroit. And I think, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, GP, the Detroit GP, that's become – it's such an interesting event with the double there and things like that. It's become one of those that like people have a love hate relationship with the Detroit Grand Prix, but overall it's a love relationship. I think it's the hate is, is that, you know, it's become such a big weekend. If you don't do well there, it really screws you for the rest of the championship. Um, you know, but it's, uh, I think that's awesome, man. The Detroit, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, there's so many auto manufacturers there and everything else. Like it's just the automotive industry as a whole, like Detroit is, you know, it's just, it's such a big part of Americana. And, you know, I think it's great that, you know, it's, it's becoming healthy again there and, you know, and things like that. And, uh, you know, the, the, you know, just the city is, you know, it's coming out of that dark period and, you know, shining now. Exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure for Team Penske, especially anybody who drives for Team Penske, since this is Penske's backyard. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with Chevy as well. And, and a lot of people are excited. And what else is pretty cool that if you haven't seen one or if you haven't got a chance to go to any of them, SST comes out here. Yeah. So not only do you get to see the Indy cars, IMSA, you also get to see the SST trucks. And it's just, it's really cool automotive motorsports type of experience. 
Yeah. Well, talking about a motorsports experience, we, we're having you on today because you and I had the opportunity to uh, uh, be up there at the ERX Motor Park in Minnesota for, uh, uh, for I guess, rounds three and four of the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League. And, uh, you know, I wanted you especially to come on air because I've been to ERX before for, you know, it plays host to, you know, UTV racing, snowmobile racing, snow bikes, some X game stuff. But um, I hadn't been to the, any of the short course events there at ERX yet. You've been there the past couple of years. You were there this year. I mean, I got to tell you, Tiffany, that is an absolute beautiful, beautiful facility that Carlson's and the Playsteads have, have put together there. Oh, it's, it's an amazing one. And if you have a chance to talk to any of the drivers, especially if they have a motocross background, there's a lot of different things that are motor or motocross esque, I guess, if you want to say that, especially with coming out of the split lanes into a whoop section into a Talladega turn. And so it's, it's really cool because it has all these different aspects. And just like you were saying, I really truly think that no matter where you're at, at the at ERX, you're going to have a great view. Like if you're right in front of the podium, if you're up in the grandstand, if I like, I know a bunch of people were there this past weekend since it was like 90 degree heat and 90, like 5% humidity. They were all over in the grassy knoll area underneath all the trees. So there's a lot of great viewing points from it. And, you know, having that hairpin turn, like I said, the hairpin turn into the split lane, into the whoop section, as many times as I've talked to drivers, that's probably some of the hardest areas because you're making such a huge turn and then you got to make a split decision if you're going to take the left or the right lane, you know? Yeah, you know, and, and sometimes depending on who you're banging with, you get shoved into the lane you don't necessarily want it to go down. And, you know, it's that track is just awesome. Everybody loved it. You know, and, and I said earlier in the show, uh, you know, when I opened up and, I, you know, I knew you and I would get into talking about it. But I said this track, like you even talk with the people at Lucas who, you know, they own all the tracks on the West Coast. That's the difference in Midwest and the West Coast. Lucas owns the West Coast tracks. Uh, you know, they contract with the track owners there in the Midwest. But. That track, even though everybody at Lucas said, that's like the premier facility for short course in the U.S. And I think, you know, they're three years in. I know the crowds continue to grow. But I, I think, you know, five years from now, that is going to be like a destination. I mean, I think it already is. Like, I told, you know, it's like, gosh, with that and then X Games back to back, like I'm, I'm telling people, I'm like, hey, you want a vacation? Go to Minnesota in the summertime. You've got you got ERX one weekend. You got X Games the next weekend. In between, you can do Mall of America, the water parks, the lakes. Like I'm like that is a des- you know like that is going to be such a big event. I think in the years to come. No, exactly. And I mean, all you'd have to do is Airbnb one of the houses that is on a lake out there. I, it's beautiful. It's green. It's lush. The weather, besides how you know. We were a little hot because we were at the racetrack. We weren't in swimsuits. We weren't at the lake. But imagine that a 90-degree weather at the lake. It's beautiful. It's sunny out. Like, what more could you ask for for a summer night? Yeah. Well, and talking about the track, too, I was, it was funny. I was walking around afterwards, and all the people were, like, clustered in these areas under the trees and stuff like that. And I was up in the announcer stand, and, you know, I hadn't – it was after everybody cleared out. Well, then I started looking in the trees. Like, they'd actually gone so far as to put, like, Captain Morgan um, booths stuffed up in the trees that I didn't even know were there. And I'm like, now I see why all the people were there. Like, you know, but they thought so far ahead. They're like, hey, let's, let's put these, uh, you know, these alcoholic beverage booths in the middle of the trees where all the people cluster and things and i'm like they thought of everything there no no and they really did and the like vip tent that they had over there that the carlson's put on was super nice they had so much food and just different drinks and options available it's it's a really really nice facility and i know um i had a chance to talk to some of the celebrities that were in the celebrity race um that they were doing and they said that they really, really enjoyed it, the whole Carlton's, and they went back to the camp and all that, and it was just really nice. So overall, I think people really enjoy and love that type of weekend. Yeah, for sure. So talking about the racing, I mean, uh, you know, you and I have been uh, both at Cranon and now at uh, ERX. We're about halfway through uh, Midwest Short Course League. I mean, you know, I, how are you, you know, what are you thinking about things? I mean, I know, you know, the Pro 4, Pro Light fields have been down a little bit, um, you, know, you know, but Pro 2, like, I mean, Mikey Vandenhoevel's having a great year there. I mean, uh, you know, what, what are you thinking overall about the picture of racing? I mean, you look at Buggies and uh, uh, Michael Meister's just dominating things there. But, uh, you, know, what, what do you, uh, you know, what do you think about the overall picture there racing in the Midwest right now? Um, right now, I think everybody has a great opportunity. Everybody, like you were talking about, Mikey Vandenhoevel. 
I had a chance to talk to Mikey this past weekend, and I was just saying this was Friday, or I'm sorry, early Saturday morning. I was like, how's it going, Mikey? How's everything? He's like, it's good. It's great. I'm really excited to be here and everything. And I was just complimenting him just on how well he's been driving. You know, he's been fabbing and working on all these other cars, Chad Rayford, Sean Morris last year, you know, Flying Dutchman, all of those cars. And he's had a hand in some of cars that are winning. And now he's finally getting his chance to prove to him, hey, not only can I build these great cars, these great trucks, I'm going to be able to race them. I'm going to be able to get on top of the podium and show you why, you know, the Mikey Vanden Heuvel touch is apparent, you know? Yeah, I agree. And you just looking at Pro 2, I mean, Mikey, obviously, he's having a great year. Chad Horde, he took a victory this weekend. I mean, great to see Horde back full-time in Pro 2. And, I mean, he's driving at an elite level right now. Keegan, he showed flashes of brilliance this weekend. And then, uh, you know, he had a tough break there in his truck. Um, you know, but, uh, I mean, that Pro 2 field, it's – wow, Tiffany. I mean, it's – there's some great battles going on there. Yeah, and then even going into Pro Light, uh, I've always been a big fan. Cam Reimers, it's – seems like Cam's really getting on there. He's been podium most of the, the weekend. He's at least getting on top. I feel like his truck's super dialed in right now, and it's good to see the Cam Reimers program really come full circle, especially just because I love Cam. He's a great person, a great driver. His wife is awesome as well, like their dog Piston. It's just like I, I'm secretly rooting for Cam all the time because I feel like he just needs this and he and he's been working so hard and it's kind of finally all coming together for him. Yeah. So uh you know we're halfway through before we let you go here I mean uh you know 30 seconds what uh you know what what do we expect out of uh Bark River and then Cranon? What do you what do you think? Bark River is going to be a crazy thing. I think some drivers especially that you haven't heard of are really finally getting their truck dialed in that they'll be coming making ways you know, coming up with their names. Um, I really like the way that Bark River set up. It's a great track as well. And then heading into Crandon, I know with the, the cup coming and everything like that, some big names are going to start to come out there. And overall, it's, it's like you said, we're halfway through the, the, the season. We need to, to make it or break it. And I think a lot of people are finally dialed into their trucks, their buggies, their cars, and you'll be able to see a lot of different Either new names come up or the ones that you thought were going to be there are just going to start dominating now. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Definitely looking forward to Bark River and Cranon. Uh, thanks for calling in, Tiffany. we got to go to a break, but uh, uh, we'll definitely catch up soon. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. All right, thanks, Tiffany. All right, that was Tiffany Stone, uh, you know, one of your on-air personalities there in the Midwest Short Course League. Al McBeth coming up here after the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You do not want to miss what we have coming up next. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. 
Since 1970, KC Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. KC Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the Subaru WRX and WRX STI a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend the Subaru WRX and WRX STI it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here just wrapping up things with Tiffany Stone, who is, uh, you know, one of our uh, broadcast team members there, along with Rob, Rob Klepper and Brent Smith in the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League. Uh, great event there. Um, you know, just they pulled out all the stops. And, uh, you know, talking about pulling out all the stops, we had this uh, very special Polaris uh, Razor celebrity race uh, that was won by Levi LaValle. But uh, um, we've got uh, Al Macbeth calling in here right now, who uh, also was on the podium. So uh, welcome to the show, Al Macbeth. How's everything going, my man? Good. How you doing, Jim? Ah, doing well. Um, just talking about uh, that race there at ERX Motor Park. Had Tiffany Stone on before the break, and uh, you know, just talking about the amazing facility they had up there. But uh, you know, we, they had the Polaris Celebrity Race. I didn't know you're going to be involved in that, but man, taking home a podium. So uh, I guess congrats on the podium there. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Yeah, how I got a question, and this is crazy because uh, you know both of us are uh, you know involved with Polaris Razor and things like that. I have yet to drive one of the RS ones, and I know you know most of your seat time has been in uh, um, you know the two seat Razors and stuff like that. How are those RS ones to wheel though? They were so cool, and that race was such a it was such a, a cool thing because we got to, we got to drive in bone stock form. I'm used to I'm used to driving built race cars, and. Uh, yeah, having having seen in bone stock and seen how much potential one of those little units had, uh, it, it, it was mind blowing. Um, definitely, it's something that I'll be racing. I'm hoping next year. Yeah. Well, and here's a question because you know, we're going to talk about your jumps here in a minute. But um, just just looking at those things, I mean, uh, you know, something like that, like you know, you see them. They're small, compact. They're lightweight. Is something like that better for jumping, or is it better to have a little weight? You know what I mean? That you can manipulate a bit when you're in the air and things like that. It it really it really depends what kind of jump you're doing. Um, for for us up here, we race a lot of um, we race a lot of uh, motocross track style courses, and uh, the the size and the nimbleness of the RS one, um, it's gonna it's gonna change the game up here for guys that are racing in these courses because you, you you need the you need the the nimbleness of of the, of the machine to get around these courses, and um, a lot of our jumps they're uh, they're you know they're doubles triples that motocross bikes hit. Yeah. Um, they're very, uh, a big jump, but they have short takeoffs. The short wheelbase really helps with that from not helping you not get bucked in the air. Yeah. What, well, how is that? I mean, racing on, uh, you know, tracks that are designed for, you know, razors, you know, raise, racing a razor on a track that's designed for a dirt bike. Cause you know, I mean, I, I look at, you know, most of them and I'm like, man, that, that would be horrible for a razor, but it sounds like you guys are adapting to them. I mean, and a couple of years ago, jumping a motocross triple in a razor wouldn't even be unheard of. Right. But here, you, you know, you're, you guys are doing it. I mean, you know, how is it, you know, how is that racing a razor on these? And what have you had to do to, to adapt your driving style to be able to, you know, race on motocross tracks? Um, you know, what, a lot of it, uh, helps with, with the promoter, um, uh, you know, getting the, getting the promoter of the, of the, tra- of the, uh, series that we're racing into, you know, mold the jumps. So they are UTV friendly, you know, not every, not every jump of bike hits is UTV friendly, but, um, the, the adapting is just, is just practice, honestly. Uh, they're very technical, obviously, cause they're very tight. Um, you gotta know when to stand on that throttle and you gotta know when to be on the brakes, uh, 
uh, cornering is way different, especially when you can only fit, you know, before it was two in a corner. Now if you run an RS1, you can probably fit three of those things. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, no, it's, it's still racing, you know, everyone's still on the same playing field, but it's, it's just a lot tighter and a lot more, uh, a lot more, what would be the word for when looking for, uh, technical. Yeah. So here's a question. We're going to get into the jump, and that's what I really want to talk about here in a minute. But I, I got to ask your background. I mean, how, how did this whole gateway into UTVs and razors and all that, I mean, you know, how did this pique your interest? I mean, what, what was your first, you know, everybody seems like he's got a gateway into the UTV industry. You know, is it something that, like, just, like, grabbed them and pulled them in? I mean, you know, how did you, I mean, you know, I, I look at your social media and things like that, and, I mean, it, it's like, you know, you're living the razor life. But, I mean, how, how did you, you know, get pulled into that? You know, what, what was the gateway to you into this whole side-by-side thing? Yeah, the, the, the gateway literally was one ride on an 800S model when they first came out. That was the <laughs> gateway. Um, I came from a motocross background, and uh, then we, we kind of moved into the freestyle scene for years. I've always loved jumping. Uh, but, uh, you know, as, as I got a little bit older, you know, the cage thing was, was always on the back of your mind. And, uh the second those uh, Razor S models came out back in 2009, I believe, um, uh, a friend of mine bought one, and I jumped in it, and within five minutes, we were hucking out with it, and I knew instantly the life had changed. Yeah, well, it's funny, because there's so many guys, like you said, with a motocross background, and it's like for, forever they've been looking for something. You know, it's like they say, with age comes a cage, you know, which I, we all get a laugh out of that, but there, there's a little bit of truth to that, you know, and it seems like for the longest time, like these motocross guys, they, they were looking for like, a, you know, something after the dirt bike, or at least something that they didn't have to be on the dirt bike full time anymore. And it was like the side-by-sides came in, and it was even the snow guys, you know, it's like guys like Levi, you know, it's like, boom, it's like, we found it, like, it's here, you know, and I, I think it's crazy to see what you got, you know, a guy like you is doing and pushing the limits in these things, you know, it's... It's kind of rad that it's there for you guys now. Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's kind of one of the reasons that I'm, that I'm doing what I'm doing, uh, just to kind of, uh, you know, enlighten that, hey, look how, look how capable these things actually are. You know, like we're, uh, I've never jumped a dirt, a dirt bike as big as I've jumped a razor. You know, like it's, uh, they're so capable. There's so much potential. Um, where the future is going is, is even more amazing. Like, I mean, just every year, Polaris comes out with something like that more and new and it's just it, the sky's a limit for these things yeah well and how did the jumping thing come in i mean because obviously you said you got a dirt bike background but dude like the jumps you're doing in a polaris race i mean you know like i think what was it like six seven years ago i think the world record was like 60 or 70 feet or something i, I at this point i've jumped a razor 75 feet you know but like now i mean where you're going with this thing it's just like mind-blowing i mean how did the jumping thing come into play for you um, I've always really liked jumping. That that was one of the reasons I got into motocross and freestyles because I just I always felt comfortable in the air. Um, when again in, in 2009 when these things came out, I mean, I within a week of me having one, we had pulled up two freestyle ramps together and we were hucking freestyle ramps with them. Um, just the way they flew, the way it all was, I I just instantly saw potential in it. And me being me, I just tend to take things too far or, or, or not far enough, but, uh, <laughs> we, you know, if I'm, if, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And, um, that's kind of the path one right now. You know, we're just, we're literally going to see how far we can actually go. Yeah. Well, and that's what, like, you know, it was like there for a while, you were just like pushing the limits and you were like competing against yourself. It's like, how far can we go? It wasn't like you were setting a record and then sitting back and waiting a couple of years for somebody to try and top you. You know, it was just like every day it was like, boom, let's push these ramps far. Oh, we jumped it this far. I think we can add another 20 feet to it. You know, like to me, you were just like, you were in competition <laughs> with yourself to push the limits, you know? <laughs> you know, I was, uh, honestly, I, I still kind of am. We haven't, we haven't, uh, even though no one's seen anything really big from me recently, doesn't mean we're, uh, we, we've stopped. Um, it's just at this stage of the game, there's a little more thought going into it, um, a little more of a process. The, the uh, repercussions of a failure at, at these distances are starting to become pretty pretty serious. So, um, we're, you know, we're, we're taking our time. We're doing it right. Uh, but, yeah, but by no means have we, have we stopped. Yeah, well, and that was going to be my next question. I mean, because I know even talking with, uh, you know, RJ Anderson, 
Um, you know, he at one point, I think he had the record. I can't remember what it was. It was when they did one of the XPK one or XP one K films. I think it was like around a hundred feet or something like that, you know? And, uh, um, you know, and he did it and it was like, he did it in his sleep. I was one hit, boom, he did it. You know, talking with RJ, he's like, dude, I want no part of this new record thing that these guys are doing. You know, and I, I know here you know, <laughs> a while back, you had a pretty, bu- you, you had a pretty big spill. Um, you know, we, we all saw what uh, happened with, uh, you know, the you guys there with, uh, Nitro Circus and action figures, you know, and that was just a, a horrible spill there. But, I mean, at some point, you know, you guys, the limits you guys are going, and you know, for this record now, I mean, it's like, are you having to pull in, like, an engineer, somebody? I mean, you know, it's not just setting up a ramp and going and hitting. And now, like, you've got to take wind into consideration. And there's a lot when you're flying, and, you know, you can start counting and thinking when you're in the air. Like, to me, there's there's a lot going on there behind the scenes to, to make that jump, right? It's not just to show up and huck it anymore. Oh yeah, no, there, there, there is a lot going on. There's more going on than, than a lot of people re- even know. And uh, and not, not not only is the jump design um, a huge factor, uh, but also the machine you're driving. Um, you know, at, at this stage of the game, we're we're driving heavily modified machines, um, and you know, people need to know that. Like, this isn't just bolt on a roll cage and go huck a, huck a big ramp. Like, you're gonna get you're going to get hurt. Um, uh, you need, you need the proper safety equipment at this level. That's, so I, I can't stress that enough. You know, the, the jumps themselves. Yeah. There's a lot of designing. There's a lot of factors. Um, you know, we, we try to keep it safe as possible, but there's <laughs> at, at, at some point, you know, there is only so much safety you can take. Yeah. Well, and how is it, you know, cause you know, I've, you know, like I said, I've hit things in a trophy truck before. I've hit things in a razor, but nothing of this magnitude, you know, how is it? I mean, that, like to me, that first run up to the ramp when you're actually going to hit it and you're committed. I mean, what, what's going through your mind? You know, you guys have done all the homework, you know, like on paper, hey, this should work out. But, <laughs> you know, as you're making that run up, you know, and you're getting ready to hit that thing and you know, you're going to be sending it 200 feet. I mean, what's going through your mind as you hit, you know, as the lead up to the, you know, the ramp? You know what? It's 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 uh, at that point for me anyway. It's pretty calm. Uh, I don't really get nervous. Um, if we're if we're to that level where we're actually taking a run at the ramp already, usually it's you know you, you don't really got time to be scared. It's it's if you're scared, you're probably doing something wrong. Mm. It's more of a yeah. At that point, it's it, it's calm, man. Honestly, it's calm. You go head off the ramp, and then uh, and then when you're in the air there, you're kind of looking around, seeing what's up, and and then you kind of prepare for a landing. And usually about halfway through your halfway through your your jump, you're going to know whether that landing is going to be an exciting one or if it's going to be uh, if it's going to be normal. <laughs> Yeah, well, and you know, if it's one of those exciting ones, because I know you know you you've had your share of those. I mean, because you, you there is some things you can adjust in the car, right? I mean, uh, you know, gas, brake. I mean, there, there's a few things with the attitude of the car you can you can kind of help adjust, right, to kind of try and bring it back. Absolutely, um, and that's that's kind of where what we've been experimenting with. Um, honestly, that's the reason that I crashed. Um, if I had if I had just let the car go and do its thing um back on that the last record crash probably would have been fine but um we kind of did an over adjustment and we're always playing around with getting more aerial control out of these units um because the etvs aren't like a dirt bike they're they don't have quite the control up there that a dirt bike would but i'm i'm that's one of my kind of one of my uh goals is to get these things more controllable in the air so that you know we can go off a wider range of, uh, of of jumps and still have control. Yeah, you know, and yeah, it's funny. Like, I, I guess my only thing with control, like that, I even compare it to. We did uh, Terracross race it uh, there in Minnesota, heydays a couple years ago. And we had like an over under gap jump, you know, and we were jumping the, you know, and it, you go over and you jump over the guys beneath you, and like it was fine. It, I mean, I don't know. It was probably thirty, forty foot gap. But it, it was a pretty good drop, and I th- I went off of it. You know, I'd gone off it 15 times, no problems. Well, I went off of it, and I had the car set up right, so I went to put my foot on the dead pedal to brace myself for the landing. Well, I missed the dead pedal, and I hit the brake. <laughs> it threw the car <laughs> forward, and I landed, and it was the longest nose wheelie. <laughs> but, you know, right then, I'm like, oh, man. But, you know, it, you know, I, it's kind of cool that you guys are talking about that, you know what I mean? Because on a dirt bike, I mean, you adjust your weight, you've got gas break there's so much you can do but you know like you said there it's scaled back in a razor a bit you know where you still have a little bit of control but it's like 
when you can start adding, you know, more levels of control while you're in the air, I think that's when you guys are really going to be able to push the limits of this thing. Exactly, exactly. And, and this has also come from, from racing on the motocross tracks. You know, you've got, you've got on, on a track situation, you've got a jump that throws you high in the front, you've got a jump that bucks your ass end up, and you've got jumps that, you know, uh, throw you off to the side of it. Um, you know, how cool would it be to actually get it so that, you know, all those jumps, you still got the same suspension set up and you can still land them all smooth. Yeah. So uh, before we let you go, what's, uh, what's up next for you, Al? I mean, what, uh, what's in the plan? Some racing, any jumping? I mean, what's, uh, what's coming up next for you guys? Um, got a, I got a trip down to uh, St. Anthony Sanders coming up here in uh, the end of August to a UTV invasion. Um, I do kind of jump car that I just built, Medusa. Um, she'll be kind of debuting out there. It was supposed to be at UTV takeover. We had some issues. So um, I'm planning on, on hucking some pretty big stuff out, out at that place. Um, from then on, uh, we've got uh, uh, hands on deck to get ready for the Baja 1000 this year, which will be on that and um, after that, we have a fairly big snow feature coming up this year that I think uh, will open a lot of people's eyes. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it. Ball 1000, we'll definitely have to get you dialed in back on the show uh, right around 1000 time, man. It'd be great to catch up with you before that. Yeah, man, right on. I'm, I'm sure I'll be really tired at that point, but uh, <laughs> I'd love to be back on. <laughs> All right, Al. Well, uh, thanks a lot for calling in, buddy. Uh, you know, appreciate the time. You uh, keep shredding it. I love watching you on Instagram and, uh, you know, seeing what you guys are coming up with, man. And, uh, you know, best of luck and uh, everything coming up. Right on, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate it. All right. Take it easy, buddy. Have a good one. You too. All right. And uh, that was Al McBeth, uh, UTV shredder there in his Polaris. Uh, we'll wrap things up after this when we come back here on the Down or Dirty Radio Show, powered by... Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound 
Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all new G Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Just wrapping up with Al Macbeth. Uh, you got to follow this dude on Instagram. I'm telling you, if you follow one person this week, make it Al Macbeth. Uh, this guy, he, the, the jumps he does, 200-plus feet in a Polaris Razor, absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, so make sure and follow this dude. I'm telling you right now, uh, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give him the promo right here. Um, you know, we, I'm going to give you give you his Twitter, Instagram at username, so you don't have any excuse. It's at, at Al underscore Macbeth underscore three fifty seven. Follow him, and uh, you will thank me immediately. Um, but uh, thanks for Al for coming on, Tiffany Stone, uh, Mark McMillan. Uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in. Uh, lots of action. Don't forget all those rally events coming up this weekend. X Games. Uh, we'll be talking about it all next week. Big thanks to Players Racer, General Tire, Subaru, Vision Wheel, Casey Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirt Fish. Impact, Optimus, MotoShield Pro, uh, Wakeboard Island at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. I am at Jim Beaver 15. Um, make sure and follow me on all forms of social media. Um, make sure and subscribe on iTunes to this show as well as my other one, Project Action. And uh, if you're looking for a coupon at Dirtfish uh, to get a discount, it is at JB Dirtfish, and that'll give you 15% off any and all uh, classes there at Dirtfish Rally School. And I do understand they've got like some five days, some like double advanced training now. They've got some stuff. So uh, if you've been to Dirtfish in the past, they've got something that's new and fresh for you. Uh, I can promise you that. But uh, uh, we'll be back next week with more on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Be safe. As always, game on.